Now, a very important thing uh, when working with MIDI is a MIDI editor. Every doll has it, and in order to be proficient in creating music with virtual instruments, you need to be a good friend with your MIDI editor and to know how to use it effectively, quickly, uh, to get the most of it. So by just double-clicking on the track, and I'm going to open a piano track from this project here, if I double-click on it, it opens up the MIDI editor. Now, um, we can expand this window by just clicking on this arrow here, open in separate window, and we will do that to have it in full screen mode so we can see things better. Now, as you can see, I have some, you know, piano notes. I'm going to zoom out. Again, for zoom in and out, you can use the same options like in your project window. So by just pressing letter G or H, on your keyboard, I like using these two. You can do some vert uh, horizontal zooming, so zoom out and zoom in. And by just uh, on PC, by just clicking on the wheel on your mouse and holding it, you can drag and move the window. So let's zoom out a little bit, and we can also make. Uh, these notes a bit wider a little bit here by sliding this one here down um i just like to keep it large enough to see what notes are these so it says you know d4 g4 a4 d5 and so on i find it useful to see what notes are playing um okay so let's do an overview of the main toolbar in this video so the first one and a very cool option an important one is solo button by having solo enabled, let me go down to the lower zone again. If I play this project, let's play it. And again, I have solo enabled. Right? I can only hear this track, even though I have many tracks here. Right? But this one is the only one playing. Let's go back to the full screen mode. Um, another cool feature is this one here, auto scroll. If you don't have auto scroll enabled, you won't be able to follow the content that is playing. Now let me show you what does that mean. If I zoom in a lot, let's say I need it, I'm editing something, and then I want to play the track. If I disable auto scroll, look what happens. See, things continue playing. Let me pause it. But I can't see the window moving. So if I enable it and then I play it, just zoom out a little bit so you can see it. Let's click here. it continues moving so that you can see what is playing and maybe you decide to edit something to stop over there to you so that you know exactly where you are. Um, now, again, if you press a note, the next useful option is right here, acoustic feedback. If this option is off, if I click on the note, I hear nothing. If I turn it on and I click on the note, I can hear the feedback of every note and what is it, what is playing. Now here we have the set of tools, which are basically almost the same like the ones in the project window. The only new one is trim option, but uh, we will use these options in the next video where we, where we will do some editing and do more with these tools. So for now on, we have these tools, draw, erase. So by selecting draw, we can draw a note I'm going to delete it. Um, we can erase notes. So, you know, we can erase this one. Oh, let me just erase. Click on it and it disappears. I will undo it on Control plus Z. And so on. So you're familiar with these tools. Now, another cool feature when drawing notes and when inserting new notes is what velocity do you want? Now, velocity is basically like the dynamic range, do you want to have the note played softly or, you know, pressed like high to have its maximum dynamic range? So I have my notes set at 70, maximum is 100. So if I go up here, if I call this arrow, it goes up to 100, actually 127, sorry. That's the maximum for MIDI. MIDI information can be divided in, you know, 
127 different levels. That's just how it is. So if I just double click on it and I say, okay, uh, 70, type it in, press enter. Now when I go to my drawing tool, I insert a new note. Let me move it here so you can see. See, here is its velocity shown down here. Okay, let's remove it. Um, now again, snap option on and off does the same thing as in the project window. Again, you can set your quantize value. I have it set on 16 here. Um, now another cool feature here is grid type. Again, you have the same thing in project window. We haven't talked about this one too much, but it's a very cool feature because you can do, so when things are set to grid, when you have your snap option on and you, so you want to move this note, when you move it, it snaps directly to the grid, to the line. So if I want to move it and my snap is on, I can move it just directly to the exact value. Like right? So it's 16th note in this case. Let's undo this. But if I select this option here, grid relative, this allows me to move this note relatively to the closest quantized value. So what does this mean? If I select this note and I want to move it to the right, see, I can keep that part that is off and move this entire part for the quantized value for the 16th note. But starting from here, from the beginning of the note. Now, as you can see, these notes are not perfectly played in here in, in this part. And I wanted to keep it like that, to keep that human feel so that it doesn't sound robotic. And let's say that you decide, okay, I want to keep the same feel, but I want to move these notes. I could just select all of it, have the grid relative option on. And if I just move all of it, look what happens. It stays in the same relationship with the lines. I just move it exactly for the entire 16th note. Okay. Um, the next thing that we have in Media Editor is Quantize Length. That's a new thing here in the editor. Uh, you don't have this one in your project window. Um, so this tells me, uh, for example, when I'm inserting new MIDI notes, if I draw new notes, what's going to be the lowest length? Like if I insert a new note, I cannot insert a note um, shorter than 1 16th here. If I just click once, it's instantly 1 16th long. I go here and say, you know, a half half beat. If I click, so I can start from the half and then drag it for half more, half more. It just, you know, because the snap option is on. Now, if you want to draw freely, you have to turn off the snap option. If you turn it off, take the draw tool. You can just, you know, drag freely however you want. Let's delete it. Now, it's also possible to look at more than one um, MIDI tracks, and basically more than more than you know one, two, or five tracks together. Let's open lower zone, and let's say I want to work on my string section here. I have my ensemble patch, one viola, one cello. I go and select all these three tracks and I double click on one of any of these. So if I double click, look what happens. I have all of these tracks selected. Now some of these are overlapping, but here if we go to this option here, uh, layers, I can select different layers. I can say viola and now this one becomes active. Right. It tells me where it is, see, it's in this part, and these are the notes being played. I go to cello, see, it goes right here. Now I have several takes here, so that's why I have three tracks. But it all gets selected, and you can see it visually, you know, what's being selected. So it's a cool thing when you want to edit, you know, several tracks, or 
let's say you're working with strings, you want to do some counterpoints, uh, and you know you want to have an overview like on the staff so that you can see where the notes are, where the movement goes, and so on. Okay, now let's go back to our good old friend piano. I'm going to turn up the lower zone, click on piano again. Okay, uh, now this is a very useful option, step input, and I have dedicated a separate video, so stay with me. I'm going to explain this one, you know, in a different video. I love this option, it's amazing, it brings you, gives you a lot of possibilities, but more about that later. And the last thing to see here is the last part here that which has velocity here uh, we can choose event colors now two useful options here velocity or pitch so midi notes can be shown by velocities so as you can see the ones that have lower velocity are lighter and the one that are very they have like very high velocity let's go to this one they become kind of eventually red so it goes from i don't know light purple bluish something like that up to red color now there are several several color codings here i like only these two i find it useful so the next one is by pitch so you get this colorful overview of different notes colored by pitch by notes in the scale and and um, um yeah just by pitch so that would be it for this first part uh in the next video we're going to go more in uh we'll talk more about editing these notes some shortcuts how can you quickly move through the editor and to you know effectively move notes and manipulate it to get clean fast and productive workflow so see you in the next one